Welcome, noble citizens of Azerheim, to your guide to the ever-growing free cities of Sigmar. You who have chosen to leave Azerheim with its comforts and relative safety, to go out and adventure into cities of the Foundation and Beachhead for Sigmar's eventual reconquest of the realms. Before we start on which city you would wish to call home, I must ensure all of you are aware of their general history, just so we are all on the same page when I guide you through each city's major selling points. You all know of the Realmgate Wars 100 years ago, when Sigmar sent a Stormcast to let the Chaos Gods know of his return in celestial glory. Now, when Sigmar sent his Stormcast, he didn't send them to random locations of course. Each location had a strategic importance. Maybe it was a location of a realm gate. Perhaps it had a vital resource. There might have been a trove of rumored arcane artifacts. Either way, once these locations are secured, which could take years depending on the enemy they faced, then the building can begin. First, Lord Ordinators and Lord Castellan search for ley lines and fonts of magical power that may be in the area. Upon these are formed fortresses for the Stormcast known as Storm Keeps, or several depending on the planned size of the city. Once done, the lands surrounding the keep are cleansed. Faithful of the devoted of Sigmar, Caligiate Arcane Wizards, and Sacrosanct Chamber Stormcast working together to remove any lingering taint of chaos. Then come the Dispossessed Labor Clans and Ironweld Guild crews to begin constructing the city itself, working closely with the Stormcast, Free Guilds, and Caligate Arcane to ensure optimal layout for defense and the magical attunement. Soon enough, a city is born. A city open to the various races of order and their armies. As for the governments of the city, they generally follow the same structure as Azerheim. A grand conclave is formed. Twelve members from important businesses, clans, or whatever the city finds important, that rule the city with a just and wise hand. Their decisions determining the goals of the city, and guiding the city's diverse armies. Well, with that out of the way, let me help you choose which city is right for you. There are dozens and dozens of cities, and we don't have all the time in the realms, so I will mainly speak of the major cities. But if you're interested in the smaller cities, I'm sure there are some pamphlets you can find somewhere. Now, let's start with the cities within the realm of Gairan. The Living City The city is not only our home, it is our family. The Living City one of the seeds of hope birthed after the Realm Gate Wars in the realm of Garan. A birth that was quite difficult, for the area where it would plant its roots was infested with chaos, specifically with the Skaven of Clan Morbidus. After some brutal fighting, where the forces of the Sylvaneth, as well as the Stormcast of the Hallowed Knights and Garan Guard battled most fiercely, they were able to scour the land and surrounding forests free of chaos taint. After that campaign, the great Lady Alariel raised the boughs of the Everspring Swath, creating a massive cluster of trees that would become the Living City. She made ramparts and walls of living thorn, great canopy districts and widening oaken pathways. And in honor of her alliance with Sigmar, she opened it to the various free peoples to live within, and allowed the construction of the Oaken Spire, the great storm keep of the Gairan Guard at its center. A storm host who is said to hold the queen in almost as much reverence as a god king himself, perhaps even more so. Which is understandable. The Gairan Guard are the reforged souls of the last tribes of humans slaughtered in Gairan during the Age of Chaos. You could say worshipping her is in their blood. And there is, of course, a smaller but just as respectable storm keep for the Hallowed Knights as well. Besides the Stormcasts, humans, elves, and Duerden you will find in any free city, you'll find a sizable number of silver neth of the Oakenbrow Wargroves. Unlike most Wargroves, the Oakenbrow tend to work quite well with the Stormcast and Free City Warriors that make a home in the Living City. They understand, unlike their more stubborn brethren, that in order to free our lands from evil, we must all cooperate and become a greater whole. I should note, there are also some Wanderers, those elves who worship Alario and used to live with the silver neth before the Age of Chaos. Despite their love of the goddess, they tend to be confined to the outer quarters of the city. Trees have long memories, and are slow to forgive those elves for abandoning them during the Age of Chaos. We can only hope forgiveness will come with time. As interesting as the city is, the outside is much more so. If you can, 
visit the nearby twin jade kingdoms of Thria and Verdia. In Thria, all plant and animal life is male, and in Verdia, the opposite is true. During the passing of the seasons, the life in these kingdoms make migration to sacred hunting and mating grounds, and the hunting during those times is exquisite, which Lady Alariel allows as long as you are respectful and take only what you need. There are also vast forests of iron oak, a rather tough wood that is the city's major export. Used for everything from the wooden stocks of free guild pistols to the load-bearing beams of major construction, and if you're a noble with more money than sense, perhaps a fairly fancy door. Now I won't lie, it's not all pleasantries and happiness. During the season of war, a little while back, there was a battle. And although the forces of order won, including a moment where the city itself took mobile form to crush the invaders, there were scars. Even now, druids of the Everspring Circle continue to keep infestations of bile worms and pox stingers at bay, lest it infect the living city's roots. And although the forces of order are now dominant, the forces of Nurgle still covet those lands. They still nest in the Glot Marsh and their vile city of Plaguespire, strongholds that, although strong in corruption, I assure you will soon be cleansed by the forces of the living city. For the forces of the living city are made of the Viridian Guard an army made up of wanderers, Sylvaneth, and free guild soldiery, warriors trained to fight in the twisted labyrinth of the Everspring Swath. So comfortable are they in those twisting paths, they call those outer defenses their home beyond the walls. They travel light and strike fast before fading away. Wild riders and stag mounts stabbing at prey with long bladed spears. Elven rangers and free guild crossbowmen perforate the enemy with arrows. Not to mention the elite woodland warriors, known as the Sisters of the Watch, with their longbows formed of arcane energy. An army so in tune with nature around them cannot possibly know defeat. The Phineseum. We fight for a return of the glories of the past in this dark and depressing present. Perhaps you prefer a home in Gairan with a bit more quiet and stoicism. Then I must say the Phineseum is perfect for you. When the anointed of the Phoenix Temple first came to these ancient ruins, they encountered a sight that those rather dour elves found beautiful. A city frozen in time. During a previous battle, most likely during the Age of Chaos, the mountain next to the city split apart. Normally, all you would expect in that circumstance is several large stones crushing everything below, but this was the tree-like Aborian mountain. And when it split, it caused a tide of amber to gush from its rocky trunk and roll over the city and the surrounding battlefield, causing combatants on both sides to be permanently cast in amber, essentially becoming an amber glacier with a rather lifelike diorama within the center. As the temple's phoenixes flew over the frozen battlefield, the magical fire of the birds caused some of the amber to melt and lift up into the air, causing a golden mist that surrounds the city to this day. I'm not exactly sure of the process, but the city's leaders have somehow been able to turn this mist into a defense. Any enemy assaulting the city soon find themselves frozen in amber, turned into decorations that stand among the gleaming ramparts and white marble towers of the city. Those elves have strange aesthetics. The city has become the center of the Phoenix Temple's power, and many worshippers make pilgrimages there. It is the place for those elven warriors overcome with grief horror and loss to find peace among the flaming shrines of the city's temples. I will warn some of you though, although many races call it home, the elves make up the majority of the Grand Conclave. They see this city as a symbol of the rebirth of the grand elven cities that were lost in the Age of Chaos. As such, although they will go to war if they are needed, they prefer to focus on art and high society, seeing themselves as a center point for the growing culture of the mortal realms. Within the center of the city is the Golden Castrum, the storm keep of the Lines of Sigmar, a rather reclusive storm host who generally keep to themselves unless needed in battle, which suits the city's residents just fine. In war, the city's armies fight like vengeful revenants. Any loss of warriors in battle is treated as incentive to fight even harder against those who would dare harm their fellows. Backed up by the Phoenixes, who they treat as living idols of their god, the Ur Phoenix, they are quite a formidable force. The Grey Water Fastness. What fool told you to fire when you see the whites of their eyes? We have artillery! Just fire! If you wish to go to a city brimming with technological innovation and industrial might, 
might I suggest a Greywater Fastness. It is a city fortress that sort of looks like a large metal beetle digging itself out of a rather messy looking swamp. Home of the various Ironweld guilds with its cannons and guns and tanks. A powerful city that, despite being in Gairan, is not really as in tune with nature as other cities in that realm. You see, during the season of war, the surrounding area was turned into a wasteland with all the explosions and fire the Iron World used to defend itself, becoming a swampy mess of destroyed forest, muck and unexploded munitions. Known now as the Ghost Mirror, and the belching smoke clouds and unhealthy substances dumped into the waters isn't helping with its recovery. Understandably, the Sylvaneth that lived in those once green forests don't appreciate what happened to their home, and make a point to harass the city on occasion. If only the tree lord of those Sylvaneth, I believe a being named Pale Oak, could finally see reason. Despite the occasional skirmishes with the surrounding Sylvaneth, the city's industry is immense. War fills its coffers, and its tools of war are in high demand. Their tanks, cannons, and guns etched with Duradun runes needed on every battlefield across the realms. So essential to their economy is the Ironwell's factories that the Council of the Forge, a council formed from the heads of the various Duradun clans of the city, overrules the Grand Conclave on anything related to business. And like all businesses, the council wishes to expand, looking for any excuse to warn neighbors for more resources to use in its factories. The city's armies are composed of the various cannons of the Iron World Arsenal, as well as the Iron Breakers and Iron Drakes of the Dispossessed, not to mention their elite handgunners called Greycaps. Any enemy who goes against them should expect a punishing bombardment of overwhelming firepower, while being held in place by the Iron Wall of the Duordin. Oh, look at that, it's snack time already. Go ahead and grab some pastries as we break for a few minutes, and when we return, I will guide you on the cities in the realm of Akshai. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video on the cities of Sigmar, specifically the ones in Gairan. If you like it, please like, subscribe, comment, press the little button, when the little, the little bell thing so you know whenever I post a video, etc. And if you really like it, please consider giving it to my Patreon and my Kofi. The extra money gives you the time I need to work on these stories I love. Anyway, talk to you later and... See you next time.